Welcome to this eGrow instructional video series uh, on how to effectively scout for pest problems. My name is Raymond Cloyd. I'm a professor and extension entomologist in horticultural entomology in the Department of Entomology at Kansas State University. Today we're going to be talking about how to best scout for pest problems in your greenhouse. Well, the first question is, why should you scout? The first thing is to determine the population dynamics or the numbers of insect and mite pests in your greenhouse, both spatially and temporally. Spatially refers to space, temporally refers to time. Without that information, you have no idea what's happening in your greenhouse. Number two is evaluating how effective your current strategies are, whether it be using insecticides or miticides, biological control agents, culture or sanitation practices. So scouting is extremely important in helping you determine, one, population dynamics of insect and mite pests, and number two, how effective your management strategies are. There are two ways to scout crops in a greenhouse to determine or evaluate the population or numbers in a greenhouse. The first one is active scouting, and the second one is passive scouting. So let's, let's go review the first means of scouting, and that is active. Active means you go out to your greenhouse and you randomly select some plants in your various cropping systems and you basically look on the leaf undersides for the various life stages such as eggs, larva, nymphs, and pupa. Now, what you can do is you can use a 10x hand lens and this will allow you to get up close and you look at the underside of leaves. And the reason you do that is because most of the life stages of insects and mite pests reside on, on the underside of leaves and determine what insect or mite you're dealing with and also what life stage, okay? That's the key component there. Remember, most of the life stages of insects and mite pests are on the leaf underside, so you have to look under the leaf undersides to determine what's going on. Now, what you can also do is you can take a flag, put it in a pot, and every time you go out and scout, which is about once per week, go to that plant you flagged every time and use it as sort of a, we call it sort of a sentinel plant to, as a means of always going to that for determining what's happening, which could be representative of what's going on in the rest of your crop. The next one is we call passive scouting. And that, what that means is you're putting out some type of a trap uh, to actually lure or attract the flying stages of many insect pests, such as thrips, white flies, and leaf miners. What this typically involves is the use of sticky traps. And one of the most common ones used is yellow. Now you can use blue. That will be used mostly if you're dealing primarily with western flower thrifts. But for other insect pests that you're dealing with, white flies, leaf miner, fungus gnats, and shore flies, I would prefer or recommend using the yellow sticky cards. Well, how do you use these? Well, first of all, you take off, usually you take off the one side here, and what you can use is you can use just one side of the sticky card one week and then basically peel off the next one the next week and put this one back on the one that you used the previous week. So what you do is you take, what we recommend is taking a bamboo stake, putting it into the growing media, and then you take a clothespin and you attach the yellow sticky card just above the crop canopy of the plant. And then you monitor or check that yellow sticky card once per week. And after the first week, again, you would take it off, take the uh, material on the back, put it on the side that you used previously, and use that same sticky card for two weeks. Now that's going to be used again for your flying insects, such as thrips, white flies, and shore flies. Now for fungus gnats, what you need to do is you need to take the yellow sticky card and you need to place it in amongst the growing, right near the growing media, because that's where fungus gnat adults primarily reside, and you're gonna capture more fungus gnat adults there than you would if you put it just above the plant canopy. Okay, now, after you've, after you've basically, after about a week, and you, you take off the yellow sticky card, you may find out that you don't know what's actually on the card. Well, if you have trouble identifying the insects that are on here, what you can do is take the uh, covering that was on there previously, put it on the yellow sticky card, and then either send it to a state extension entomologist or a plant diagnostic clinic for positive identification. 
So we've talked about both active and scouting procedures. So what do you do with that information? You basically have the number of insect pests in your greenhouse at a certain time and space. Well, what you want to do is, after you've recorded that information on, on a clipboard, you want to take that back to your office and then upload it or record it, or basically record it onto an Excel spreadsheet. After you've done that, you can then use that to graph the populations and track what's occurring in your greenhouse during that time and space. You can also use it to track what's happening in various cropping systems based on the crop types that you're growing throughout the season.